Hi everybody, here today to talk to you about two variable systems. Right, so check in with today's homework. Right, so some key things you have to understand. Inconsistent equations. Inconsistent equations, they are two lines that are parallel, meaning that they will never touch, they will never cross, they will never be an answer. So all I asked you to do for this homework section was just to make equations that work in this situation. So I made two lines, they have the same slope, they have different y-intercepts, they are inconsistent. Now the opposite of inconsistent would be a dependent consistent equation. A consistent dependent equation, or a, a consistent dependent system of equations is when your system is the exact same line. Right, so the fact that I graphed y equals 2x plus 1 and y equals 2x plus 1, the answer to that system is every point on that line. Right? There are an infinite amount of solutions there but it's not all real numbers, it's every single point on that line because the system is the exact same equation twice. The last one, the more common one that we get, our, in, our consistent independent system, is where we have two lines that cross. These two lines, they cross, they give us a one point answer. Uh, my setup was y equals x plus one, y equals negative two x plus four, it crossed and we got our answer to that uh, system at one comma two is a one point answer, right? So consistent, independent, one point answer. Consistent, dependent, infinite point answer. Inconsistent, no solution. Now in the back, just talking about some of our general methods. Right, so the first one, which I prefer the best, is elimination method. What I did there was, I decided right off the bat, my method was gonna be to eliminate x. I multiplied the top by two and the bottom by negative five so that my x's were opposites, 10x and negative 10x. So as I added straight down, they canceled out. Right. I got y to be zero and I subbed into the top equation to solve for x. Now it wouldn't have mattered if we subbed into the top or the bottom equation, we would have gotten negative three also. Right. Finish the problem off, check, right. make sure it works in both equations and then label our answer. We have a consistent independent answer because we have a one point solution. Now a common mistake, talking about example two here, a common mistake here is that people look at this right away and they're like, oh, I'm gonna multiply the top by 21, the bottom by negative 14. No, one thing we've talked about in class is keeping our answers small. Keeping our answers small is important. By multiplying by those two numbers, we'd have huge numbers to work with. And we know, we don't get a calc in these situations. So making sure that you, you look a little bit differently. All right, 21, 14, what is the least common multiple between them? 42. So I multiplied my top equation by three, my bottom equation by negative two, did our normal elimination method, but kept the numbers manageable. Right, so don't always just multiply by the numbers you see. Find that least common multiple to keep the numbers manageable. The last example here, you know, I only use substitution method if it works nicely for me. Not every time is substitution method the way to go. Right, but in this situation, the fact that I was able to make a nice y equals equation, sub it and solve, that's a good idea. Um, personally, I probably would have done this method elimination like I do everything elimination. I just think it's the easier method to work with. But I want to present the substitution method to you also. Um, don't force the substitution method, only use it if it's beneficial to you, right? If it's gonna give you a gross fraction, avoid it at all costs. All right, now, looking at the lesson worksheet from today. All right, lesson worksheet one. So, getting some ideas out there. All right, so, if we graph, right, ways to solve our system, graphing, right? Graphing's not a bad way to do it. Graphing, the great thing about graphing is that we see the answer. All right, we graph both lines and see where they cross. All right, we graph both lines and see where they cross. Pros and cons to everything. The advantage, it's obvious. You see it. The disadvantage, it's not always integers. It may look like it crosses at 2, 1, but really that was 2, 1.1, right? And it's just not as obvious to us. So graphing may not be the best method every time, 
right? We have our algebraic methods. We got elimination, and we have substitution. More work going on with these, but more likely we see and get the right answer better. All right, so I want to go through three examples and give a little bit of my hints to them. So but I want to solve this system right here. I'm going to multiply my top equation by 7, my bottom by negative 3. So I get 35x minus 21y equals 154 over negative 18x plus 21y equals negative 123. I got my opposites there with the y's. They cancel, leaving me with 17x equals 31, which is 31 over 17. All right, now there's my x. Normal thought process here by a lot of you is, quick, plug in x to solve for y. But look at x, 31 over 17. That's gross. Why do I want to work with 31 over 17? You don't have to. What I say here is, we double solve. Why work with 31 over 17 when we can just solve it again? So if I solve it again, multiply the top by negative 6, the bottom by 5, I'm keeping my numbers manageable again. So negative 30x plus 18y equals negative 132 over 30x minus 35y equals 205. My x's cancel out. I'm left with negative 17y equals 73. y equals negative 73 over 17. And imagine if you solve for y first and sub that in. That'd be even grosser. Right, so by solving it twice, we avoided having to work with our fractions. We avoided having to work with more difficult situations. So double solve method. Avoid the ugliness. We get a one-point answer. It is a consistent, independent answer. Now, what we know about, just refreshing on this, inconsistent, no solution. Dependent, consistent, infinite answers. And it's all points, not all reals. All right? Consistent, independent, one-point answer. All right now, when we solve our systems, you know, the fact that we got... 17x equals 31. That was telling me right there that we were getting a one-point answer in this scenario. Sometimes you don't get the one-point answer. Sometimes you have your system set up. You have your system, you have your system, you solve, and you get something like 0 equals 4. Now, in this situation, when you lose variables, that means it's either going to be a CD or an I. It's either going to be inconsistent or to be a consistent dependent. So my advice is this. When you lose the variables, if the left does not equal the right, like we have right now, that is an inconsistent answer. There's no solution. If we ended up with something like 4 equals 4, where the left equals the right, that means it's the same line and it's a consistent dependent solution. And so the normal situation is we solve, we get an x, we get a y, done. If we lose the variables, that means it's inconsistent or it's a consistent dependent, and we have to figure out which one it is. All right, to the back. Fractions. Let's avoid them. Now, there's an idea that you could put in what I call a dummy variable. So I could say let a equal 1 over x and let b equal 1 over y. So I don't want to work with fractions. So I could just make this 6a minus 7b equals 8. 15a minus 14b equals 21. Why work with the fractions when I don't have to? All right, so I'm going to solve my system now. Only got to multiply the top by negative 2. Negative 12a plus 14b equals negative 16. 15a minus 14b equals 21. Uh, so I get 3a equals 5, a equals 5 thirds. So if I want to, at this moment, I could double solve or I could plug in. You do what works for you. I don't think this is going to be a bad one to plug in. 6 times 5 thirds 
minus 7b equals 8. So I got 10 minus 7b equals 8. Negative 7b equals negative 2. b equals 2 over 7. All right, so we got our answers. 5 thirds, 2 over 7. Are we done? No, those are not the answers. Those are getting us to the answer. So what we know is that a equals 1 over x. So if I solve 5x equals 3, x equals 3 fifths. Same thing for b. 2 over 7, 1 over y, cross multiply, 2y equals 7, y equals 7 over 2. So our answer is 3 fifths comma 7 over 2. What is 5 thirds and 3 fifths? What is 2 over 7 and 7 halves? Reciprocals. So in the end, by using this subin method, we solve for A, we solve for B, X and Y are going to be the reciprocals for that. And that's going to hold true every time. All right, last example, giving us an idea, kind of combining both. So I'm going to put my dumb. I got 16A plus 10B equals 46. 24A minus 16B equals 296. And so one thing I could do here is simplify. Make these numbers smaller. A lot of people, when they work with systems, they think we always have to shrink it. We always have to, uh, I mean, we always have to grow it. We always have to multiply it by something. But know what? If I took this equation here, 16, 10, and 46, if I divided it by 2, I got 8a plus 5b equals 23. If I took this bottom equation, divided it by 8, I got 3a minus 2b equals 37. All right, so I shrunk my numbers. I shrunk my numbers from there, so I'm able to then jump into doing my system. Why make things larger when you can make things smaller? Make things smaller. Make them more manageable. That's the goal we're going for at this class. All right, so I'm going to multiply by, I'm going to go 2 and 5. So that gives me 16a plus 10b equals 46. Now listen, the funny thing is I multiplied by 2 and got it back to where it was. All right, It didn't help me necessarily for that spot, but it helped me get the visual view of what I need. 15a minus 10b equals 185, which is 31a equals 231, a equals 231 over 31. Ew, yikes, that's not the best thing to work with. All right, so I don't wanna do it that way. So double solve method. So I'm gonna multiply my top by, this time by negative three, and my bottom by eight. So that gives me negative 24a minus 15b equals negative 69, over 24a minus 16b equals 296. Got my opposites for a, able to cancel them out. Negative 31b equals 227. All right, b equals 227 over negative 31. Two not so friendly looking numbers, but what is our final answer? Flip them, reciprocals. 31 over 231 comma negative 31 over 227 and it is a one point consistent independent answer.